Oi lads, it's Danny here today, show, bringing you a new video on the derivative of sine x. Why is that equal to secant squared of x? Let me prove it to you lot. But before we begin, please leave a like and subscribe and let's get right into it. Right, so to prove this, the derivative of sine x, why it's equal to secant squared of x, we're going to have to apply the limit definition. And in this case, our f of x functions just can be tan of x. So the first thing, let's rewrite it in terms of the limit definition. So, it's basically going to resemble something that looks like this. Notice we got a tan x plus h. We want to separate these terms. We just don't want to have them inside a bracket like this. It's a very hard to solve for, uh, for, you know, very hard to solve when you got a fraction that looks, uh, sorry, when you got a function that looks like this. So in that case, we're going to, what we're going to do is apply a trig identity for an addition, in bracket addition, of a tan function and in that case the trig identity you lot are going to have to use is this one right here and you can rewrite this as the following and the reason why we have to do this is it's going to render it solvable and the next step from this point on is we, we got essentially a fraction here and we got in a fraction as well over here we got tan of x divided by one and we're going to basically put everything in one common denominator so we're going to apply we're going to basically multiply the denominator and the numerator of the right hand fraction because we're trying to get a common base so we can eliminate the common terms and simplify very important so once you do that you are going to see that you obtain a fraction that looks like this notice that the divided by h term right here becomes a multiplication so it's really just one divided by h you can rewrite it as this and over here is basically a foil and in addition so the terms have been added basically and this is the common denominator which you see here on your screen notice that the tan x and tan x will cancel out and really what you're going to be left with is tan of h plus tan squared of x tan h we can further simplify the numerator by factoring out a tan of h so once we do that we're going to have a bracket term of one plus tan squared of x and this bracket term right here could be rewritten according to trig identities as secant squared of x. Very important. So once you reach this stage, you are going to have to apply a quick trick. And not a trig identity, obviously, but it's a trick. The reason why you'll see in a moment why we have to do this, we can basically, you know, rewrite this tan of h term as sine of h divided by cos of h. And if we move this sine of h term over here basically because it's a, it's a multiplication right we can rewrite it as this and we're going to basically apply the limit to this fraction and then to this fraction as well so once we do that what you know you are going to notice is the sine h divided by h limit as h approaches zero can be approximated as equal to one the reason why we can say that is because of the, the squeeze theorem and to the use of geometry. So this here is equal to the one via the squeeze theorem. So if in that case, well, we just have this, we just have to solve for this limit. It's pretty straightforward, you know. We just apply the zeros where the h's are, and what you are going to see that you're just going to be left with secant squared of x divided by one, ultimately leading us to the answer of secant squared of x. So this is why the this is the reason why tan of x the derivative of tan of x gives you secant squared of x if this video has helped you a lot please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you a lot later bye